Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about April 23rd <clears throat> uh, EPL soccer main slate. Um, it's a three game slate. Um, I am excited about this slate because it is really just Manchester City um, and then who you play with. Um, the second secondary stack, I think, I think is the most important thing, in my opinion. Um, I think in a cash or optimal setting, you want to have a lot of Manchester City pieces because they're playing against a very easy opponent in Watford, as you see. Um, so let's just go through the slate overall. Um, Leicester City is at home at plus 180 against Aston Villa at plus 145. So it's more of a toss-up game in that matchup. And I don't want to expect that to be a high-scoring matchup, just given how each team likes to play. And then, like I said, Manchester City is at home. Big, big, big favorite at minus 900. And then Watford is a huge underdog at plus 2,200 to win outright. And then Norwich City is plus 240 um, at home, an underdog against Newcastle. And I do fully expect that matchup to be much high scoring game than the Leicester City Aston Villa game. So like in an optimal setting, you want to target a lot of Manchester City players and then have either a piece of Norwich City or Newcastle, in my opinion, um, because um, I think that there's going to be much more, many more uh, DFS uh, points available in that Norwich Newcastle matchup, in my opinion, because each team likes to play, you know, in an open play and all that. So compared to Leicester City and Aston Villa, who like to play a little bit more closed. Um, they are more structured. Um, they, they, they have better defense. They're not as leaky on defense compared to Norwich City and Newcastle. So I do think Norwich, Newcastle, United, uh, you know, should be, a, should be a more high-scoring game and has some more of a scoring upside. But yeah, let's target the Man City first because that's the easiest to talk about um, because you want to have a lot of Man City pieces on here, on this slate at least. Um, and I don't think it's smart to fade completely Man City, in my opinion. I think you need to have some pieces, but just different pieces of Man City because more than likely they'll score at least two or three goals, in my opinion, today. Um, but yeah, if Man City starts all these players, I mean, it has to start with Kevin De Bruyne. Um, I think it depends if they end up start, starting Ryan Mares. If Mares starts, I think Kevin De Bruyne's, uh, you know, point upside takes a hit. Um, but if Mares does not start, as this projected lineup uh, is talking about, um, KDB's uh, stocks are soaring high. Um, so you want to have have a share of him in a lot of your lineups. So starts with Kevin De Bruyne um, and then Phil Foden. Um, he scored in the last game. I know he had a score, scoring drought, um, but last game he scored. Um, I think um, his pricing is still not up to the point where I'm just going to fade him if it were being too expensive. I think he's still kind of cheap for what he what his role is, especially without Raheed Mahrez. So if Mars does not start, I, I'm definitely going to start Foden, in my opinion, in my lineups. And then the rest of them are GPPs. I mean, maybe Cancelo is a cash consideration on, on this slate where the fullbacks are not. I mean, I think there are some good fullbacks, actually, on this slate. Um, but I think Cancelo has probably the next highest floor amongst these players, um, Foden, De Bruyne, and then Cancelo. I mean, De Bruyne, Foden, Cancelo, probably three highest floor guys on Man City. And then the rest of them are GPP, including Grealish, Sterling, who any, you know, you want to see who's starting up top here um, next to Phil Foden. Um, but if Grealish and Sterling, Sterling start, you want to uh, have a piece of them. And then Gundogan and uh, Gundogan and Rodri, I mean, I think they are consider in consideration as well if you if you are playing for GPP. And then Zinchenko, he likes to go up and down, down the flank. Um, but against Watford, I don't know. I think Watford has a pretty good fullbacks as well, Kamara and Femenia. So I don't know if he's going to do well. Um, if I have to choose between Zinchenko and Cancelo, definitely Cancelo for sure, even though he's a little bit more expensive. And then Watford, I mean, it's a long shot. So I think like any other Manchester City game, Man City will dominate possession. So you want to have a Watford piece who you think will score. Um, 
you know, they're not, I'm not going to pick a player who racks up points based on possession, the ball, possessing the ball or creating chances, right? You want to uh, have a goal score if you are a huge underdog, and then that's it. So really the minimal, minimal exposure that I will have for Watford is Saar, Joao Pedro, and Dennis has been struggling lately. So maybe Saar and Pedro, and that's it. I don't even, I'm not even interested in their fullbacks um, unless you kind of have to fit somebody in for uh, salary reasons. Um, but fullbacks against Manchester City um, usually have to sit back a little bit to, you know, tr- focus on tra- uh, trying to defend uh, the Man City forwards a little more. So they're not going <clears> to <throat> be able to go up as much. And frankly, they're not going to get the ball as much as they, you know, would, they would in other games, you know, against weaker opponents. Leicester City of Aston Villa, like I said, um, I think that's this is going to be a lower scoring game. Um, but if you want to target some players from this team, Leicester City, you have to you have to start with James Madison, who has the highest floor. So Madison, Harvey Barnes. I would say Tielemans, but then he hasn't been as aggressive in terms of attacking. Um, he hasn't been racking up as much as many points and for DFS purposes ever since Madison came back from injuries and Tielemans came back from his injury. Um, so I think I'm going to go with Madison, Barnes, and then maybe one of these fullbacks. But for set pieces, I mean, Madison takes most of it. And then Albrighton, if he does end up starting like this, project the starting lineup, Albrighton will take some as well. Um, there is a good chance Tielemans and Albrighton takes in, uh, goes into uh, Madison's uh, share piece, uh, share of set pieces. Um, so Madison, Tielemans, and Albrighton, I think those are the high floor guys. And then Barnes has been on fire lately. So I, I'll consider Barnes as well. And then Ianacho, he's a striker, so it's either he's either a goal or you know goal or miss. Um, so he's either gonna score a goal, or so like he's a perfect GPP consideration. Whoever plays a striker doesn't really have that much floor most of the time. Um, so, but Ianacho, <clears throat> if they end up scoring, I mean, he could he could be on the end of one of them. For Aston Villa, it all starts with Coutinho, in my opinion, and then um, John McGinn, Douglas Lewis. Louise and then Maddie Cash. <clears throat> but I don't think I'm going to have any Aston Villa pieces today. I don't really like them the way that they've been playing. I mean, Aston Villa is like in the middle of the sta- well, like toward the bottom of the standings. But look at the form. I mean, they've lost four in a row. I know they won three in a row and they now they have lost four in a row. So they really are not in good form, um, but their defense is okay. But Leicester City does not really scare me that much either. So, but I think Leicester City will still dominate the possession, I think. So Aston Villa, I think I'm just going to have maybe interested in Coutinho, McGinn, Louise, and then maybe Matty Cash as a fullback option or Ashley Young, one of these fullback options. And then this last matchup on the slate is what I'm mostly interested in. Like I said, Norwich, Newcastle, they're both uh, leaky on defense and they like to, you know, push forward. Um Norwich has been playing better lately, and so has Newcastle, really. I mean, like, you see Norwich is at the bottom, but, I mean, you, you would <laughs> – I say he, they're playing better because they had lost so many games before that. They have a draw and win here, see? Um, and Newcastle has been playing really well. So I think I'm going to have to favor Newcastle, just like the odds indicate. Um, for Newcastle, though, it's, it's – um, What's his name? Ryan Frazier is not available. He, I think he is still out. If he ends up starting for some reason, if he's healthy um, and starting, yeah, I mean, Frazier is like a lock, in my opinion, uh, for all lineups, in my opinion, today. Um, so that would be interesting. If he does not end up starting, then his uh, production is spread it out between, let's see, amongst actually Gamar- Bruno Gamarez, John Joe Shelby, and then Matt Target, I think. So those are the guys that would have some set piece shares. Um, but in the open play, Bruno has been on really good in good really good form. Um, he had an assist and he had two goals the day uh, the game before that. So really, I think the offense goes through Bruno in my opinion right now without Frazier. But then I think Almiron sc- scored as well. So really, I mean they've been playing well. 
Um, so I would say I'm interested in Guimaraes, Shelby, Target, and then Almiron. And then for GPP, I mean, yeah, ASM, say Maximin. He hasn't been playing well, but, you know, he has the upside to, you know, get create scoring chances. He has the upside to uh, score goals. And, and same for Chris Wood. So really those two guys I'll be interested in for GPP purposes. For Norwich City, um, <laughs> that's a tough one because I'm a Pookie guy and he, you know, he's been really in good form just by scoring goals lately. Um, so I've made, yeah, I've been profitable just playing Pookie in every single Norwich lineup. Um, but yeah, if I, if I were to stack, stack Norwich, I would have to start with Pookie, in my opinion. Um, he takes penalty kicks as well. And then Rashika, um, he hasn't been playing well, but he's Rashika. I mean, he's he's their best player, technically. Um, Rashika, Pookie, and then maybe Elise Malou. Um and then some fullback options, maybe Medjinulis or Byram. But if I if I were to pick any Norwich guy, I mean Puki and Rashika are probably one of the two that I'll be interested in. But like I said, I'm I'm mostly interested in Newcastle pieces today. And yeah, so I mean, so like just overview of the slate. I think I'm gonna have some main, main city pieces, just it's like a Russian roulette. Um, you just pick some players um for Man City, hope that they score. Um and then uh, I'm going to have a lot of Newcastle in my opinion today. And I think Leicester City will uh, win this other matchup, but I think it's going to be much scoring, uh, much less scoring matchup. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Reach out to me on any social media, Discord, um, Twitter, YouTube, um, you, know, you name it, um, at DFS Chan. And if you like the video, please hit the like button below and then please hit the subscribe button uh, below as well if you want to watch videos about other sports. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a good one. Hope you have a good weekend. Thanks.